Welcome back to Foodie Down Bronx. I'm your host, M, the Hungry Dominican. Our next guest is a community foodivist, certified natural food chef, vegetable pusher, and sofrito slinger. She recently hosted a cooking class at Dykeman Houses where elected officials and many in the community showed up for what no doubt was some truly delicious food. Please welcome to the show, Chef Yadira Garcia, AKA the Happy Healthy Latina. Hey, <laughs> hola. Hola, hola, hola. Thank you so much for being on the show. Oh, thank you for having me. I'm excited. I'm, I'm super excited. I, uh, I loved you right the, the moment I met you. We, we met, uh, was it a month or two ago? Yes, we broke bread together, we which is an important We broke bread thing together, to me. that's right. We, we met at uh, Rosanna. Yes. Rosanna's uh, Melanin Magic Brunch. Yes. Right? Bomb. And uh, <laughs> it was so much fun. And you were the one who convinced me uh, to get a quinoa bowl because I had just started my vegan summer. You were, and you were sad. You had I was really sads. sad. Because everyone was sampling all the food. And I oh was my like, God. we going to be all right. I, I was right? not okay. I was, <laughs> I was bugging out. I was like, oh, great. Keep bringing more stuff that I can't have. This is amazing. And everyone's taking their pictures and this and that. And I'm just like, no, I want to be good about it. And, uh, and then you were like, my man, just get the, get the quinoa bowl. And I was I like. I have a little sauce in there. I'm I a little like, sauce boss. Okay. I'm like, that salsita you got. Yeah, yeah. You was, know, we hook it up. <laughs> it, was, uh, it, was, it was awesome. So it was a great time. So it was wonderful meeting you. And um, the show hadn't started yet. And I knew already that I wanted you on the show because oh, you. you do some really incredible things that um, I'll be honest. I, you know, before this whole endeavor, I wasn't really paying attention to too many things that people were doing when it came to um, food activism, food justice, you know, uh, cooking classes. It was more about where can I get my next meal as opposed to the people behind it. And then I found out about you and I was like, holy smokes, she does some amazing things. And your account yeah. really kind of started making me pay attention to things and, and, and to chefs and people with the sort of same mission that you have. So can you tell me a bit about your Instagram, what it is that you do, all of the activism that you're a part of, it's, it's super fascinating. Eek! <laughs> okay, so Happy Healthy Latina. Is me, is us, is the community, mm -hmm. right? It's the platform that I run and really is the movement um, that I run. And it is, food is deeply intersectional. We mm -hmm. all gotta eat. Right. So it's not a me, it's not a you thing, it's not a, it's an everybody thing, mm -hmm. right? And we all contribute to that in a different way. Um, and most of us just think about it as when the food shows up kind of on our plate. Um, but we don't know what we don't know. Um, and I realized through a health crisis and issue of my own, um, that I had no idea how to use food as a tool other than to fill my stomach. Yes, um, I right? relate to that 100%. Right, yes. that's it. Yes. You don't, you don't, I don't, I didn't, I, didn't uh, I wasn't born woke, <laughs> as I like to call it, right? I didn't grow up and like, oh, we gotta go fight for food justice mm -hmm. and get our kids healthy in our community, right? It was the absence of health in my own life that brought to light. Um, I was 20 years old, my ancestors' wildest dreams, I'm, from the Dominican Republic via the BX, right? <laughs> but I'm first generation from DR and everything was about, you know, my parents immigrating here, live your best life, you have mm -hmm. to get a college degree, you have to make it. Um, but I had a really bad accident in college, my junior year at NYU that left me totally legally disabled. Oh, wow. Four herniated discs, a pinched nerve, and a broken tailbone. So I was like, eh! Wow. Right? Stuck in my body. And as I realized, your body is your instrument, is your tool. Um, and if, and food is what gives it the GPS and the directions yes. for what to do or what to go, right? right? I love if this. you're gonna get up and Someone high please yuck, make this a meme right? or something, a gif. Food <laughs> is like yes. the directions, the gas in the tank that says if you're gonna high yacht or if you're gonna, <laughs> or you know, either way. Um, and then I realized, hey, how come my great grandmother, who was 99 years old, was chopping down sugar cane in the farmlands, had her machete, she was super mm. strong, she would make her own sofrito, she would cook her foods, and she was pretty healthy. But I was seeing kids that were obese, I was seeing myself at 20 years old locked up in my body, and then I was seeing how people were aging in this society, and I'm like, mm. some, some, mm -hmm. there's something in the food, honey. Yes, yes. Or as BP Eric Adams says, it's in our dinner, not in our DNA, mm -hmm. right? So I started to make that connection that food plays such a deep role in our community from the way that it heals us, from the way that it shows up, from if we have access to it or if we don't. Right. Ooh. Right. Ooh. Right. Food is political. Yes. Yes. And Ooh. I've learned that uh, through, through the guests on this show and just reading up on more things up about that. It's, it's completely politicized. And it's something that once you know, you can't unknow. You right, like you can't it. unsee it, and so and and I've said as much um, on the show and to my producer as well, Sanji, that I've said like you know there are things that 
once you learn them about food, you really have to be careful about your relationship with it. And Hunty, uh, we are not the real estate developers, but how do the chicken spots, the liquor spots, the bodegas, mm -hmm. the options that we have in our community show up, right? Yes. Because I also don't believe the myth that we don't want to be healthy or that we don't like good food, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. There are celebration foods in our communities. Yeah. I'm all about the moro and the penil and the <laughs> pasteles and all that, but I'm also about the yuca, the platano, the sofrito, the oregano, the yeah. culantro. Yeah. Ooh, we have a rich history. You would not like that penil if mm. I didn't season it with some fresh <laughs> vegetables or sofrito. So true. So true. Right? So true. So we also have to break down the myth that we don't like vegetables or that we don't like fresh food. That's all we come from in our cultures. That's so true. Ah. Wow. I'm like literally like just I'm like I'm like ah. lost in your words right now because it's so it's so true. This idea that I, I can't I'm trying to think. I'm like, I don't I don't know if like vegetables were pushed on me growing up. But you're right. It's like that's a majority of what we have at home. I say I grew up you know? on the sad diet, standard American and Dominican diet. Mm. So while I did grow up, I grew up here in the Bronx in the 90s, right? I had mm. access to McDonald's and Taco mm. Bell mm. and pizza and all that. And that was I thought that was delicious. But then also at home, we were having rice and beans. Yeah. We were making pasteles together as a family. We were making the masa with the platanos. I grew up being sent to the Dominican Republic every summer till I was 16. So I saw the connection to the farmlands. Mm -hmm. And then being told here that we don't eat healthy foods, mm -hmm. I'm like, hold up. Hold up, wait a minute, <laughs> let me put some truth back it? in it, <laughs> right? Yeah. So that's where Happy Healthy Latina was born from, a movement of joy, mm -hmm. of knowledge, of reconnection to our food and our roots, and not just giving it to uh, our elders and community members, but starting with the seed, which is our youth, Yes. our kids. Yes. What? What, we, what we learned this stuff in school? <laughs> I know I learned about some weird history, some weird yeah. Eurocentric history and some other things, but who taught me where my food comes from? How do you grow up to be happy and healthy mm -hmm. if you don't have a roadmap to get there? Right. Wow. I feel like I want to just put everything you just said on a T-shirt. That's <laughs> <laughs> just amazing. Um, can you tell me about the, uh, the schools, the, the greening school food that you have, these classes that you, you partake in? Tell me more about that because it, it really does seem like it's a celebration. Like you said, it's, it's, it's food is, is – we have this relationship with it. It's, it's being happy. It's being joyful. It's, and I see that on your Instagram. I see a lot of positive images on your Instagram. It seems like everyone's just in this it's with you. It's a party. Food, it does not have to be punitive. Mm. You know, when I met you, you were at the beginning of your journey mm -hmm. of being plant-based for two months, mm -hmm. and I did. I saw some of your sadness. <laughs> and I said, but we don't have to focus on what we can't have. Yeah. We can focus on all the things we can have. Absolutely. Right? So when I became a chef, um, that's why I say I'm the people chef. I've never cooked in a restaurant, mm -hmm. ever. I only cook on farms and schools in my community because I don't want to move up out of my hood. I want to move back into it I love with that. this knowledge and tools, that's right? That's amazing, yeah. And I want to see more black and brown chefs, and I want to see more of this kind of programming so they had to see it to be it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I decided... Representation. Yeah. Representation. Absolutely. You know, I was cooking at Marble Hill last week, and when these little girls, these 10 campers, found out that I was Dominican and they were Dominican, they absolutely lost it. After that, I knew the mushrooms were sold. <laughs> I said, I'm going to put some sofrito on it. They're going to eat it. They were so happy. <laughs> like, Chef Yadi, can we take pictures with you? with the mushrooms right. and the vegetables so it's that so i decided to take that same training from culinary school mm -hmm. or from restaurants or from fancy farms that can sometimes be elitist and hard to access and come back into the bronx with it come back into our urban farms our community gardens our schools our churches our street corners if you give me a milk crate i'll stand there and i'll make sofrito on the corner <laughs> That's where I want to be, grounding down in my community. And we're growing a movement. There's a small child army out there that's getting educated and is learning how to get this training so then they can have jobs. And when I'm viejita, they can keep going with it. Right, right. And right? You, you want to create that, that, that ripple effect, you know, of, of sending out the message that, you know, I'm Dominican, I'm doing this. You guys don't have to leave the Bronx to find good alternatives, you know, good food. We can food. have green spaces. We can have healthy products. We can have culturally relevant and heritage-based foods. Mm -hmm. You can have your moro. You can have your rice and beans. That's okay. Oh, it's not just smoothies and salads that are healthy, honey. <laughs> ah, right? Yeah, no, it's so true. It's so true. I, I've, you went to DR... Uh, how long ago? It was it was a few months ago or, or like two months, like a month ago. A month ago, yeah. And I was watching all the things that you were eating and and talking about. It and I was first of all, I haven't been to DR in so long that Ooh. anytime I see anybody there, I just Mama. like I feel miracle. <laughs> I would go right away. That um, it was really um, 
actually your account was really awesome to see DR through that prism, that lens, right? Because you were showing a lot of the the, the del delicious natural foods that people have access to there, um, and putting that's out that's abundant. It's abundant, right? Because it's it's local, it's seasonal. You know all those fancy marketing terms companies mm. try to put <laughs> on us. <laughs> <laughs> we grew up like that, honey. Local, seasonal, fresh. What you have access to, what's around you. I'm just trying to recreate that same prison here, mm -hmm. which is we don't we don't come from lands of scarcity. We don't come from lands of without access to these things, to these fresh foods and to these stories, right? So I want those stories to stay alive. We pass them down through food, through recipes, through traditions, through building healthy communities holistically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so you were um, featured on BuzzFeed, Picky Eater, which is super great. And you have an amazing um, YouTube channel as well. Um, can you tell me about your exposure on BuzzFeed? Yeah, again, I'm, I'm, there's a whole culinary highway and I'm over here driving in my own lane because a lot of people are the, the fish and meat kind of people yes. and potatoes people, right? And I've come into the community, my community with like, I'm going to be the vegetable slinger, <laughs> right? Because I know, like I said, growing up from Dominican Republic and seeing things that all the flavor from our foods comes from blending herbs and vegetables yes. and creating a sauce or a flavor profile. So I was able to kind of take those skills and my culinary training and develop a show with BuzzFeed. So on the creative side, this is social justice too, mm. to get people's phobia away from vegetables. Yeah. Food is just alchemy. If you know how to saute, stew, braise, marinate, make a sauce, I can make it taste like anything, <laughs> right? And so yeah. I love to bring in people that absolutely think that they hate something. Because the only thing constant is change, right. right? Right. So once I can understand if you like salty, sweet, sour, tangy, we're making those flavors match. Right. And then you can do that for yourself. And that's the true empowering gift and joy. So the BuzzFeed show has a couple of million views. So the videos are between five to eight million views. Wow. And I truly believe that's the thing in it because we come in with that joy and celebration. Yes. I'm like, I'm going to make that veggie taste like what you like. You yes. like spicy, girl? You like sweet? You like salty? Ow. Mm -hmm. Okra? Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? That's the new one for this summer. Not okra. It's okra. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, yeah. You know, one of the things that I love about, you know, going out and, and, and going to dinners and events is that I do have a perceived notion about certain foods and I'm just like I'm not gonna I'm not gonna eat that I'm not gonna like that and being proven wrong is actually the best thing for me so fun it's amazing like I, okay so and, and maybe we'll, we'll do this another time but my thing is bacalao oh I do not like bacalao right and so if you could ever make a dish <laughs> God. That would just make me not realize it's bacalao or, or not taste what I think I don't like yeah. about it. Then, girl, we, we could be like friends forever. Yeah. Um, all right, guys, <laughs> grab yourselves a snack. Foodie Down Bronx will be right back. Hey, guys, welcome back to Foodie Down Bronx. All right, chef, so tell me what we have here, this beautiful spread. This is what we're going to, te voy a poner a cocinar today. Right, okay. We're gonna make, really, we're gonna make sofrito. Mm. Sofrito is the basis of any Caribbean uh, dish, and it's what makes it taste good. So imagine eating all of these vegetables in a bowl yes. versus being able to blend it up and season your food with it, right? right? So this is one of my tips and tricks because a lot of the seasonings that we have in our community have been sold back to us with a lot of sodium, mm -hmm. salt, sugar, fats, and that is now what your abuelita, titis, and aunties were using yes. in the food. Yes. They were picking the fresh herbs. And a lot of the work that we're doing around food equity in the city actually has to do about this, that we wanna see this. Do you know what this is? Dime. Esto es recao, culantro, right? Wide leaf cilantro, mm. right? So smell that. Amazing that we want to see these foods growing in our community. And it's a really, really exciting time in the city right now because the Speaker of the City Council has just prioritized food equity in New York City. So awesome. food justice is like a big deal now in the city, <laughs> which we're very excited that the movement is catching up. The city's catching up with where the movement is, which is that we're fighting to see these foods grown not upstate, not in another state, right here in the Bronx. Right. FUBU, for us, by <laughs> us, right? So we're gonna put you here with the pilong, right? Because our ancestors had it right. right. We're gonna break down all these vegetables, blend them. I like to put them in a nice cube tray and bam, you have Boom. a little flavor bomb right there. <laughs> so when you wanna season your food, you don't have to use that sazon packet mm -hmm. and go sazon bay on it right, because right. it has so much sodium in it. So crush this garlic for me, Em. Absolutely. We're gonna do, and the we'll ancestors do. knew in the pilong, okay. 
because actually it's very medicinal to crush your garlic. If you can do it up to 10 minutes before you start cooking, something magical happens and it's called the allicin releases. It becomes more bioavailable and so it fights inflammation in your body. Did my abuelita know this? No, but look at the magic. They were already doing these things. So a lot of things that science has caught up, that people get masters for and MPH and doctors, the ancestors were already magicians and alchemists. Right. Right. So they knew that the healing was in the food, right? So it's not the flavor. So whenever someone was starting to cook at home, and I love that sofrito is like a raw, vegan, mm -hmm. paleo, all mm -hmm. these fancy, all these fancy marketing all techniques. All those buzzy words. All those right? buzzy words, right? And all this fresh stuff. So we're gonna blend up cilantro, some culantro recao, mm -hmm. which we're trying to get more of our farmers to grow. And then we're gonna use this right here, which is, mm. smell this, the naranja agria. Oh, that grows in Dominican Republic, mm. fresh. Right, so you can buy Great this in smell. bodegas and Latin supermarkets, and you can see this is kind of like the ingredients for a really bomb fresh salsa, mm -hmm. right? So what you're doing is, instead of having to eat all these herbs, you're blending them, and you can really just do a rough chop. I love that you don't have to have any special knife skills for this. You can just, just break it up, right? Break it up and blend it. Am I and doing this smell? right? Yeah. Um, so I keep smashing it. I'm like, Ooh, am look. I over smashing or am no, I just? No, and look at that beautiful I did that release. Guy. You did that. That's what you me. did that. So if you wanted to make a mofongo, you could put some olive oil in there and your platano in there, mash it in there mm. too. That would have such bomb flavors. And oh what is that? Goodness. That's all vegetarian too, right? It's right. a todo basado right. en planta. That's right. That's right. So this is the most cooking I've done in like forever right now. <laughs> <laughs> I just did this right now. Well, I'm super busy with community cooking classes and shooting and mm -hmm. a lot of stuff. So this is also for me a way that I make sure that I get all my kind of vegetables into. Right, so right. no matter what I cook or season, whether it's a piece of tofu, a piece of fish, See. also smell this. This is Dominican oregano. Right? That is beautiful. Oh, wow. so all this, so oh, all this you start to salivate, mm -hmm. right? So it don't matter what kind of vegetables I put this on, <laughs> you're going to eat them. Right. Right? Right. right? So it's the art of learning, not forcing yourself to eat things you don't like, mm -hmm. but finding those celebration points of the flavors you do like in your heritage. Yes. Right? Yes, absolutely. So I do need your strength here. Your, okay. I need to open this. So one thing that I do, this is my grandmother and mother's recipe, but I did update it with some culinary medicine, mm -hmm. which is traditional Dominican sofrito does use a little olive oil and a little bit of vinegar. So I use apple cider vinegar mm -hmm. because the apple cider vinegar is really good for inflammation. Yes, right. Right? You could put it on your skin too. Oh really? Yeah, oh, and you know more. people. I have no idea about that. Yeah, it's a really good toner and cleanser. Um, but you can also you ultimately want to be able to eat anything that you put on your skin or in your body, right? Mm -hmm. You don't want it to be harmful for you. So if it has ingredients that you don't recognize, we don't want to be using that, right? right? Okay. So all okay. these things, I think you know where they come from. Sí, claro. 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 And we're trying to get them to grow in New York City in our community gardens and in our farms. Because if people can access the things for their sofrito sí. or for making their own adobo right. or for growing their own beans for their moro, then guess what? They're going to eat it more, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? If kids know where to find that stuff and we make it in a way that's delicious and beautiful, guess what? They're gonna eat it more. Right. Right? This right. isn't brain science. Yeah. I feel I, like I feel like that's like the type of inspiration I never had growing up. Like everything you're saying, it's like, you know, and, and I said this to um Karen Washington who was here from Rise and I Root love Farm. Karen Washington. Um I don't remember the last time I was in a farm or, or a garden for that for that matter. They're you know? right here and in the BX, baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that. And I just feel like this is something that could have I mean it's instrumental now for everyone, of course. Yep. Um but I think it, it would have changed my relationship with food had I known everything that you're sort of putting out there. So that's absolutely what I'm trying to do. And every time you ask a child when they visited a farm, they usually got taken upstate on a trip somewhere mm -hmm. or far away mm -hmm. when the matrix is right here in their community. Mm -hmm. So we're connecting our schools to the land and the resources they have around them. The joy around cooking. We're gonna blend this up. Beautiful. Beautiful, bright, vibrant color. What do we have here? Some, some sweet plantain some chips. Some sweet platanitos. Some Beautiful. Sweet, some sweet platanitos done in coconut oil. So I do say eat your tostones, my people, but do them in Same coconut thing. oil. Yeah, right. Right, because right. coconut oil doesn't clog our heart. So that's what Happy Healthy Latina is about. Finding these traditional ways, mm -hmm. finding this education and knowledge, fighting systemic inequities by showing local electeds and officials that we do want and need these foods 
in our communities, Absolutely. being able to articulate that, right? And being able to find ways ah, to access and enjoy. So I don't know if you ever use sofrito as a dip, but... Let me take a quick picture for the gram. I use it because I use it for dip with chips. I put it on my burgers. I thin it out with a little apple cider vinegar and I make a sofrito vinaigrette as a salad dressing. What can't we do? Mm. It's very it's an all all purpose sauce. Okay, let so let's take a little bit of this and again. Oh yes. I just mean. So a lot of salsas. Mm. A lot of salsas have really weird funky ingredients in them. Mm -hmm. A lot of salt, you see any salt up here? We didn't use any right. salt, we didn't use any preservatives. Right now, Em, you're fighting inflammation. You're healing your body. You're connecting to a traditional recipe. You could put this in your freezer and if your boy is busy all week, you could go cook some veggies next week or some fish. It's a powerful thing to reclaim making your own sofrito and sazones. This is amazing. Just that one thing. Wow, this is, and the taste is unbelievable. You can grow many of these herbs on your windows, in classrooms, in schools, mm. right? <sighs> Girl, give me one second. <laughs> you know, every time they put food in front of me, I I'm like, guys, you're just gonna record me like in the moment because I'm just, this is so And good. then you taste garlic, and then you taste the peppers. Yes. And then you taste the cilantro and the recao running down your gums, and then you have an experience and a journey, oh right? Goodness. So it's not just about pesto and kale, right? I'm over here at City Hall. I made the Manhattan Borough President chant sofrito. Mm. For nutrition education. You make, um, I, I love the way you speak about food because you make it very poetic, very, um, it, it, very visual. Thank you. You know, I think you, I, I just, you, you have a great energy about you. I just, and even when we had met, um, at the, uh, the brunch, I could tell that you just were so passionate about, uh, food. And I mean, right now I could like taste the passion. And I think that's the way that we eat, right? It's not just like carbohydrates and fiber <laughs> and proteins and nutrients and macros. Mm -hmm. No, mm -hmm. it's stories. Mm -hmm. It's Christmas time. It's the it's me tying the pasteles with my abuelita. It's having that moment with a child when I first bring them to the farm in the right. Bronx. Right. And it will really make me cry because I'm very, very fortunate to do what I do in my community. Tell me more about that because <laughs> that's, so, that's so beautiful that you do that. How, how does that make you feel besides, of course, you, you know. It makes me feel deeply blessed because this started um, with my own wellness journey. And now to see each year, this is our third year really in the community mm -hmm. to see that I have a team, that we have a company, that we're growing a movement, that so we have amazing. nine contracts. We have a parks department contract. We're in a school in the South Bronx. PS595X is gonna be a wow. happy, healthy escuela starting in September. We work with re-entering uh, re citizens or non-for-profits. We work with NYCHA in our community. It's really spreading and taking fire. That's so beautiful. Six elected showed up um, to when you had your event at the Dykeman House. I didn't right? even know. That's amazing. That's a state, incredible. A state senator, a congressman, an assembly person, the director of NYCHA Communities and Initiatives, people are watching. The community yes. is taking note. And when we can break bread together at the table and come up with solutions and they see them enjoying the food and that this is the kind of programming that we want, people talking to people mm -hmm. is how change happens. Absolutely. So I may not be an MPH, a doctor, a lawyer, a senator. I'm just a girl from the Bronx that is very regular, passionate. I'm just a regular, degulish, <laughs> megala girl, right? Like AOC and Cardi, I'd be like, listen, there's a reason dreams are deposited in you. It's just a goal with a deadline. So I'm yeah. just out here trying to do it for my community and do it together. I think, I think um, oh man, I always go back to the same message when it comes to this show and having this platform. Like this is exactly the type of thing I want people to hear. This is the, exactly the type of influence that people on social media need to be influenced by. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because there's so much out there that's just empty and nothing comes of it. And then you have this movement going with, with food and you're, you're bringing people together from communities. You're, you're living out your dream by affecting other people who therefore will have their own dreams because of what you're doing. Like it's just this beautiful like ripple effect and it keeps going and going. You know I, what I see mean? so much of my work mirrored in what I see in nature and farming and gardening with the seed from when you put the love into it, yes. from how it grows with little, a little water, sunshine, knowledge and love. Almost anything will take root wherever it is planted. So 
girl. Here we you, are. You are just, you're, you're so awesome. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, so you much for, for having me. Thank you. Let's you eat are, the sofrito. I see, I, I'm, you don't even have to tell We're me gonna twice. We're going to share this. We're going to finish <laughs> this off. Uh, guys, thank you for joining me and the happy, healthy Latina, Chef Yadira Garcia. Stay connected with Chef Yadira Garcia on Instagram at Healthy Healthy Latina. Well, that's all for the show, guys. Thank you again for tuning in, and thank you to our guests today for joining us. Tune in every Thursday at 6.30 p.m. here on BronxNet Optimum 67 and Fios 33. Also, tune in on the go at BronxNet.org and find us on YouTube. From BronxNet to the world, this is Foodie Down Bronx. I'm your host and the Hungry Dominican. Remember to feed your mind, feed your body, and if you see me coming along, feed me. Adios, guys. <laughs>